It was August 2004 when we traveled to Chile to discover more about the national stadium in Santiago, the Estadio Nacional Julio Martinez Pradanos. Completed in 1938 and renovated in 2009, it was the venue for the 1962 FIFA World Cup final, in which Brazil beat Czechoslovakia 3-1 in front of 70,000 spectators. The stadium, however, was also used for more sinister purposes, following one of the most dramatic moments of Latin American history. And this was something that we were keen to find out more about. In 1970, the Chilean people democratically elected their country's first socialist president, Salvador Allende. However, it said that the then US Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger, wasn't keen on potentially another communist country alongside Cuba developing within the Americas. American President Richard Nixon said he'd make the Chilean economy scream. $10 million were made available to destabilize Chile and depose Allende. On Tuesday, September the 11th, 1973, the presidential palace was attacked and Allende killed. His place was taken by American-backed dictator General Augusto Pinochet. So began a dark era in the history of Chile. Soon after the coup, around 11,000 people were arrested and taken to the National Stadium, which had been converted into a prison and torture center. Politicians, journalists, factory workers, trade unionists, anyone who posed a threat to the military regime. It's also thought dozens of executions were carried out in the stadium by Pinochet's men. Carlos Casali remains one of Chile's greatest soccer players. Capped 49 times, he played for Chile in the 1974 World Cup after the USSR refused to take part in a playoff in the stadium in Santiago. It was in the national stadium where Casali experienced the best moments of his playing career with Santiago's Colo Colo. When we met him, though, we found that he'd mixed feelings about the stadium. Members of his family were victims of the right-wing authorities after the coup. Unfortunately, due to my socialist leanings at the time, my mother was kidnapped and tortured. We didn't know where she was taken. We were never told why she was taken away, and we were never told where she was being held. Although his mother was not detained in the National Stadium, Casale always sympathized with those who were taken there. The stadium's changing rooms were used as improvised prison cells. Political prisoners were tortured in different parts of the complex. When the international press was brought here, the soldiers would bring the prisoners out onto the stands, as if trying to show that nothing bad was happening. But terrible things were going on. If only the dressing rooms or the concrete of the stadium could speak, imagine the horror stories they could tell of what it was like for the people that were there. Playwright Adolfo Cozzi had written a book about the events at the National Stadium. He and journalist Guillermo Torres were among the political prisoners detained there immediately after the coup. When we got to the stadium, it was evening by then, and it was raining. One of the first things I saw was an iron railing about three meters high. And from that, a semi-naked man was hanging. There was an official from the Air Force who was beating him as if he was a punch bag. The guy being hit didn't react. Later, I realized the guy was already dead because you couldn't hear him screaming. He didn't react, he didn't move. More or less, everybody who was detained was the victim of some sort of violence. Some more than others. 
some with electricity, others with brutal beatings, others were shot somewhere within the sports complex itself. Pinochet reluctantly stepped down in 1990 and died in 2006. However, whilst in power, he'd passed a law that guaranteed him immunity in retirement. Procedures against his regime's crimes didn't start until 2001, when his immunity was finally suspended. Sergio Corvalan was one of the lawyers who represented victims of Pinochet's regime. Those of us who have been helping the tribunal in this task have identified 14 military officials as being responsible for the crimes at the national stadium. The first of them is Augusto Pinochet Ugat, who gave the order to open this prison camp. Furthermore, he gave the order so that prisoners should be treated in a certain way, which, we know, meant the illegal execution of hundreds of them. Yet, we learned that despite the ongoing legal process, many years after the coup d'etat, no one had been brought to justice. There was a kind of pact between the judicial authority, which was the only authority in Chile not to be tampered with, and the military. Later, once democracy had returned, it took a very long time before the process of investigation began. The investigation to discover the truth and which should ultimately lead to justice. Chile's democracy had been thriving since the political transition started in 1989. We are in a state of transition in terms of truth and justice. And until we achieve this, to tell the truth about what happened and to find justice, our society is missing something fundamental. Without justice and truth, there is no freedom. The national stadium was redeveloped in 2009, and today it's where Chile's soccer team plays all its home matches. In 2003, it was made a national heritage site. It's believed that around 40,000 people were sent to the national stadium during the nine months it was used by the military as a prison camp. It's officially accepted that over 3,000 people were murdered or disappeared during Pinochet's 17-year reign, but that figure may be much higher. I think that the national stadium should never be demolished. It should be preserved as a testimony to what happened in order to prevent this barbarity ever happening again in Chile. What we had was a group of military officials supported by American imperialism and aided by the large economic elites within Chile, acting against a constitutional government and against a people that had chosen its path and its freedom. Carlos Casali returned to Chile in 1978 after four seasons playing football in Spain. However, playing again in the national stadium in Santiago had a different meaning. I was once asked, how can you play in this stadium where people were tortured and killed? I replied, precisely because of that. So the souls of this place can be happy when they see me playing football. Subscribe now to our YouTube channel for the very best of Transworld Sports.